What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Shifty Crab Podcast. I'm your host, Vince, and joining me is the Retro King himself, Terry Jeffs. How you doing, Terry? I'm great. I'm great. Here we go again. Another week, another podcast. Ready to roll. Ready to rock and roll. I am back and better than ever. And joining me is the man who just can't get his weekend right, Adam Very. What's up, Adam? <laughs> I'm good. This By the end of this podcast, this is going to be a wet t-shirt competition because I am sweating yeah. buckets in here. So uh, <laughs> this cannot go on Twitch because they have a no nipple clause. So, uh, nope. like, well, I'm mind sweating. you, they do the, you can do hot tub. You can do hot tub now. So I think as long as you, yeah. as long as we see some kind of hot tub or an inflatable in that room, you could get away with it, Adam. You could. You give me an off. idea. For, you give me an idea for my new office. <laughs> from now on, it's going to be <laughs> Adam on the Shifty Crab yeah. podcast in his indoor jacuzzi. I'm, I'm going to be boiling like a crab. <laughs> oh, I like it. Oh. Okay. He got it. He got it. How, audio must be terrible on those streams, right? Because hot tubs are not the quietest thing in the world. Oh yeah, that can't be great. No, well, I, I great. saw I saw something on my Twitter. I think it was yesterday, and um, someone just kind of like reposting a picture, and it was literally just this girl sitting playing Mario Kart. Did you see this in a bikini? No, just sitting there, just playing in a bikini, and at the bottom of the thing, it said like category hot tub or pool beach or whatever so they have found the loophole so now yeah now it's all fair game now they can and i'm sure that had a lot of uh a lot of viewers dangerous like oh yeah falls in the hot tub she wasn't this is the thing she wasn't in a hot there was no hot tub to be seen it was just a girl just sitting on a chair playing mario kart in her bikini oh okay oh interesting yeah well false advertising there you go right False advertising. <laughs> yeah, excited for that one. But this isn't just all hot tub talk. This is the Shifty Crab <laughs> Podcast. And why not start off with a tradition? What are we drinking? Let's throw it over to Adam because I don't think he's drinking much lately. I'm not drinking alcohol uh, today. Um, I'm trying to drink less with Casey being pregnant because she stares at me with evils every time I take a sip. So uh, uh, how kind. I. Yeah, well, it's not a zero teetotal amount. <laughs> it's not yeah. saying stone, you know, I dabble. But uh, I'm currently drinking a large bottle of LucasAid Orange powered by uh, glucose. Oh, getting your glucose up, I, I guess. Well, yeah, I don't know what <laughs> yeah it's, it's to keep <laughs> up with you, Vince. It's to keep up with yeah. you. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Terry Jeffs, how British are we being today? Are we, we still with the tea or Wait. have we moved on to something else? See, I, I'm representing both sides of the coast today. Uh, Vince, okay. I'm, I'm starting it off with a good old British cup of uh, Yorkshire tea in my new mug. I just wanted to kind of point out I've got a new kind oh, of PlayStation, PlayStation mug, mug oh, like that. which I'm very, mug. very happy with. Um, the old sacred symbols on there. And But yeah, I'm drinking the tea. But I know as this podcast does mm-hmm. go go far, shall we say. So um, for, the, for, for the end game, we've got some um, whiskey um, and we'll blow all that bourbon and Diet Coke. So... Um, Representing the states, stateside there. So states. we're gonna go. We're gonna cross. We're gonna do a transatlantic flight, and then I'm gonna end up landing in uh, Kentucky. Do we think Jack Kentucky. Daniels goes with fizzy Lucas Ed? No, I would say probably not. We, but hey, are it's probably worth a try. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, yeah. We done. What we the Shifty done? Crab Podcast, all about drinking experiments, I guess. And because I don't have a glass in this room, we are drinking from a Viking horn. There we go. <laughs> nothing less for Mr. Adam Berry. Of course. Do you think I Absolutely risk the honey less. or do you think I go original or do I go fire? Like, oh, which is likely mm. to go well with an orange-based mm. fizzy drink. I think so you've got, you got a bit of flavor yeah. going on there already. Um, I think maybe the original just to see if it's not a massive mistake. Yeah. I can't go the original. So yeah. uh, we're, we're going okay. To fire or honey, huh? Uh, oh, honey, H- honey, yeah, honey. It's got to be honey, yeah. Honey for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's probably yeah, going to but... mix better with the sweetness. And yeah, and now it's it's sounding like more of a medicinal drink. Like if you've got a cold, yeah. I think you know Lucasaid with honey Jack Daniels. It sounds like something that you would want to down. The other issue is now I used to work in a bar, but I cannot free pour. So oh, okay. and yeah. 
as you know, horn shaped things are on a curve. I can't see how much I'm pouring in. Mm. I don't I don't have a level. Oh, no. And it is pitch black in there. Like I don't yeah. know. Here we go. Well, welcome to Adam's last podcast, potentially. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Have, you, how this goes. have you washed that horn? I wash my horn regularly. Okay, good. Uh, okay, yeah. Good. All right. Hygiene's important, guys. Hygiene yeah, is okay. important. Okay. Remember that. This is a lot. I don't understand how this works. Oh, no. maybe, the, maybe the drink doesn't go into the curve, because otherwise I've put far too much in. Well, this is this, well, is, this, this is something. This is we'll this is the, the content that you now. came for. So, and if you didn't come for it, then what are you doing here, Vince? Hey. What are you drinking anyway? Yeah. Oh, me! I'm drinking the traditional Blue Moon because, of course. of course, I am. Of course, I am. What else? What I have else? two six packs in the fridge that I need to get through at some point. So, <laughs> we'll see. I like it that it's you look just, at it as like a task. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is. It's, it does not I smell mean, good. Oh, I'm sure it doesn't. It's probably going to taste even better. <laughs> but you also don't have anything to stir it with, so good luck. You're going to get to the stir bottom. Stir that, Daniels. All you whisk- just let it. Yeah. Let it all sit at the bottom. <laughs> no? Is that not oh, good? Oh, no. I'm confirmed. Tastes like ass. Yeah. Mm. For, your podcast, for your audio listeners out there, ooh, Adam is making a face. I had... Um... Yep. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. I had, but because I didn't have anything like any coke or anything in the house, so I had bourbon with tonic water. Ooh. Not, not good. Not yeah. good. Did not enjoy that at all. Not one yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm blaming. I get. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will finish this. So, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. This podcast ain't coming out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Well. Continue. Hey, it's a good time, as always. You tried something, maybe it worked out. More than likely, it didn't. Like a cough drop. A cough yeah. drop. Yeah, like oh. a... Um, okay. Like Very a, medicinal. Like a locket. Mm. If, a locket has been in, if a locket has been Lockets. in your pocket, like, and you forgot it, like, it's... Uh, yeah, they're like thro- throat, oh, um, no. like, yeah. suvers, you know? Okay. So they're kind of like... I don't know. I've the got one, nothing. The ones the ones over there? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's got yeah. like the, the goo in the goose, middle. Yeah, like a gooey but, stuff. And stuff. It's glucose, isn't it? I think pretty much in the middle. Is it? It's like a honey glucose. There you it? go. There you go. Uh-huh. It's just Lucasaid. Just hey. dried up Lucasaid that's inside a sweet. I've solved the recipe. It's Jack Daniels and Lucasaid. That's what <laughs> makes a whole... <laughs> yeah. A, 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 yeah. a locket. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, fun times. Fun times. But as you know, we always start these podcasts off with what you're playing. Or, you know, if you want to throw in what you've been watching, go ahead and do that too. Let's kick it over to Terry Jeffs. What you been playing, Terry? So, yeah, start off with what I've been playing. I tried so hard to get um, Horizon finished for this podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. My monitor's just... Uh-oh. Oh, have you have you lost me? No, 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 no you're, you're still, still there. You're still there. Yeah, we see oh. you and hear you. Okay, my monitor's yep. gone off. Oh no! Oh, oh no. no! He's gone now. He's, he's gone now. Uh oh. Frozen. Oh, well, it's off the me? rails. Oh, we can, oh, hear, we can you. hear you. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna have to restart. <laughs> okay. We'll, well see you fine. soon. We'll see you soon. Well, One day we're gonna get through a podcast without technical difficulties. One day, but that day is not today. Yeah. Do you want to cool. pass it over to me? About yeah, what well, I've been you get over to Adam. You know what? You, what you've been playing, Adam? I have sure finished yeah. Mass Effect Three. Oh wow! Finished three. I've done the trilogy. You've done the trilogy. He's done it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mass Effect All trilogy complete. is complete. So, man, that is a good trilogy. You know. Right? It's such a good trilogy. trilogy. And when I played them originally, because I was poor, I didn't have the DLCs. And because what I used to do is play a game, trade it in, get a different game and stuff like that. I didn't really wait around long enough to get the DLCs. So, um, yeah, 
Yeah, obviously all the DLCs included in these. And it's some, oh, yeah. such good DLC. Such good like, DLC. And I can't remember much of the third one. I remember how it ended, because everybody yeah. knows how the third one ended if you played it. Um, but the game is just such a good game. It is. Like, it's a very good game. One is okay. Mm-hmm. It's a good building block. There's a lot of... Um, Obviously, issues with the first one, which I kind of went into last uh, last week. But um, they, yeah, like obviously the che- some where they're not filling out the cutscenes, they're putting text up instead and stuff like that because it's a new yeah. game. Second one is obviously incredible and probably a masterpiece. The best, the best one in the series, probably. But the third one, yeah, especially with the little tweaks that they've done, is very mm-hmm. close. And oh yeah, like I think. One of the things I've really enjoyed is obviously because it because I've been playing them so close mm. to each other is the story continuing over, like yeah. in those relationships. So, for example, my romance option was uh, uh, Tali. Okay. So, uh, having that go all the way through and mm. having a uh, having the payoff at the like in the third game mm. and stuff like that and having those really close sweet moments which I hadn't had the first time I played. Because I think the first time I was a horny teenager and went with Miranda, <laughs> like uh, you and everyone else, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, it, but that is just one of those things. Yeah. But the story that you had there was just so good and so sweet as well. Like, mm-hmm. and I genuinely was invested in it, and it was whenever there was moments to progress that and have story beats with her, I'd do that. And I found myself yeah. using different characters for my squad. Um, and having a better appreciation for like Liara and stuff like that, because obviously they flesh her out quite a lot in the second one with the Shadow Broker stuff and yep. stuff like that. Where, yeah, which is a great, uh, great DLC. Great um, DLC, a bit. Yeah, so the mm-hmm. DLC in the third one is that just all the stuff that happens from the apartment? That it might be. Well, there's I Leviathan, isn't there? There's Leviathan. Yeah, that's one of the DLCs. Um, yeah, I didn't which, play the DLC because I thought it was mostly like multiplayer stuff, which no. that multiplayer was just so shoehorned in. I Not just great. remember what was yeah. Shepard's apartment in the third game as standard because I can't remember any of that. I think that was part of the Citadel DLC that they did. Yes, because you get a whole yeah. new area of the Citadel, which is like got uh, casinos and uh, arcades and stuff like that and the characters meet you there and you do activities there um, and some yeah. really cool missions there um, so that the, and you can you get a house there basically through somebody and you can upgrade it and it's a the house is ridiculous it's got like a water fountain wall uh, all oh. of this stuff um, mm. and there's really cool sweet moments there and it adds a lot to some of the characters and um, I don't want to go. It's one of them, isn't it? Because people are playing yeah. through Mass Effect. You don't want to go into spoilers, but Mass Effect's also been out for a very long time. So yeah, it's, it's in that like, weird space. Yeah, it's in that weird crux. But obviously, you've played the trilogy. Yep. Uh, so you know some of the story beats in the third one, where some characters don't mm-hmm. make it that you yeah. have no control over. Like mm. with the with the DLC. They have like memorials and stuff like that, and more in depth character arcs. And it was really sweet, some of those moments. So, um, yeah. yeah, I loved it. Uh, kind of sad it's over. Mm. I will not be doing Andromeda next. I don't think I can no. redo that game again. I just want a new Mass Effect. Mm. Obviously, it's set after this so i can see those characters again exactly i think that's what probably drew a lot of people to this trilogy now yeah because of course it's people returning to experience this trilogy all over again Mm -hmm. but for people like you and me who have played the trilogies previously Mm -hmm. it's essentially revisiting old friends you know because you built those relationships up originally now going back and replaying it experiencing that all again it's it's something I absolutely want to do because I absolutely want to pick up this collection. But there's another game I want to play first, which I will probably get to later when we talk about what I was playing. 
Oh, just Voltarian. We're talking that I've completed Mass Effect 3. Oh, wow. Well, okay. I'm done. I have finished the trilogy and I'm very close to platinum in the second one. I've got. Oh. Did you platinum the, the first? As well? No, I didn't platinum the first. But I, I, when I just checked the trophies just to see, I'm very close to platinum in the second one. Just oh, naturally. okay. Just, yeah. So, yeah. Um, because I think I used to. Because I think I rented Mass Effect 2. I think I rushed yeah. it to mm. get it done in the weekend. Like, and now obviously I've had the time. Oh, yeah. And I did everything. Mm. All the side missions, all the, like, the stuff. The only thing I don't like as much with the third is, I re- and it's stupid, but I really enjoyed scanning the planets. Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually kind of fun. Can, yeah. And the third one, they <laughs> kind of just take it away. You do it a little bit, mm-hmm. but the story is so good. And I. Playing through it, I'm trying to think of a better written game for dialogue mm. and for story beats and conversations that are as naturally as yeah. good as this game. Because it's it sounds so natural when a lot of these characters mm. are having conversations. It doesn't sound forced in any way. Yeah. And the characters have such depth to them. And the voice acting in it is incredible. That's like, amazing. Like, yeah, it's incredible. Like, I can't believe how quickly you, you've got got through that trilogy as well. Yeah, it's all I've really played. Um, I I wanted to experience it as one game. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Like, so I went one straight to two, straight to three. Didn't leave a gap between it. And I would advise if people have the time to kind of play it that way mm. because for me, it heightened the experience. Mm. Like, yeah. there's a big jump between one and two in design and UI and combat, but there's not so much of a jump between two and three. Yeah. They add some things, obviously, like I was mentioning, like the weight management with your guns and you have to add mm. mods to it and stuff like that. But once you really get the loadout mm. that you want, you never change it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like yeah. with your powers, are, you don't upgrade like your charisma in the second and third one. It just goes purely off your Paragon and Renegade. So, yeah. I loved it. So that's what I've been playing. What I've been watching is very simply Bo Burnham inside his new special yeah. on Netflix. And it is a work of art. Yeah. If, if you're not a huge fan of Bo Burnham, I, I would still watch this purely because of the creative side of it. He filmed it all by himself in one room over one yeah. year and made a musical, visual, a comedy satirical and if you've seen anything about Bernie, you know how he talks about his mental health and stuff like that it's mm-hmm. a very very poignant message that he puts out throughout of this in his usual style and it is incredible i've not seen half, any of his stuff yeah I, bob burnham is is a great musical comedian mm. so he does a lot mm. of music um but this is a, this is the kind of like I think this is going to be something that people look back on as when they talk about works of art in the comedic realm Mm -hmm. and where people talk about about like Chris Rock uh, or when they talk about like Eddie Murphy Raw and stuff like this. Um, For Bo Burnham and the newer generation, this will be what they talk about. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. For a comedy show to give me goosebumps for most of it, (laughs) like is... And I, I'm a big fan of Bob Burnham, so I, I had that on my side and, and your cool. stuff going in. But it's so good. So anyway, yeah. I won't take up any more time. Mass Effect, Bob Burnham. <laughs> there we go. Good. Very good stuff. Now, Terry, you obviously got cut off by your computer. I did. It didn't want to hear about Horizon for some reason. It did not want Maybe to it's know. just jealous of the PS5. Maybe. But- Maybe it's just disappointed in me um, Maybe. because, yeah, I really tried to get it completely finished um, for this podcast. I am literally right at the end. I am. Um, so for anyone that hasn't played through uh, Horizon, spoilers incoming now for a game that came out in 2017. You had your chance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm just about to fight Hades. Um, so oh. I'm. Uh, but yeah, I, I was playing it last night, and I was I was up till 
like pretty late uh, just because i just wanted to finish it but it just got i just couldn't do it and um but you know it, it's it's great the story um i thought was really interesting it wasn't like um it didn't i, I was expecting this kind of big twist i was kind of ex- i think it's kind of obvious that aloy was had some kind of link to uh i forget her name now but the the scientist that kind of like put all this forward like um mm-hmm. with a uh, um, zero dawn and, and stuff like that but i found the whole thing in like you know really interesting with how you know the actual mean meaning of zero dawn and what that kind of meant that i thought that was really clever um and that and the way that they built this um ai um gaia to kind of rebuild you know kind of rebuild the world but the, through that the ai was kind of learning and building these creatures to kind of replicate the animals from from before that was quite cool um but yeah, and yeah, I, I, it's really cool, and I'm, I'm enjoying just the the kind of story of the different tribes, and and that and the bit that I'm on right now is I think I've just got to go and gather the um, different tribes that I've helped through the side quests and stuff like that, and then kind of get them together for the end for the end battle. But um, yeah, love it. Obviously, the the gameplay reveal of Forbidden West kind of spurred me on, um, so I've been playing a lot of it through the week. I just kind of like. Yeah. Although I I, I I try to concentrate now on the story, but I do just kind of get like sidetracked. I'm like, oh, oh, there's a metal flower up here. Oh, there's a statue. And then I'll like be spending like half an hour trying to find that or something. Um, but no, it's uh, really, really good. Really good. So I will try and finish that. If not tonight, probably um, tomorrow and um, get that dusted off. But um, I think I'm going to just finish the campaign and then, maybe take a step back from it and then kind of go back and do frozen worlds after that. We shall see next week. I think I was going to, on my playthrough, I'm going to leave frozen wilds until just before the new game. Mm. And that'll be the bit okay. that I wore myself back up with. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. What about you, yeah. Vince? Makes sense. What about me? What horizon? No, just what have you no. been playing? What have I been playing? Oh boy. So, I got an itch a while ago because to the doctor? no, I didn't okay. because this was something that a doctor can't cure. Oh, oh, because I've been wanting to play Resident Evil Village. I don't have Resident Evil Village yet, but I still wanted something Resident Evil. So I loaded up Resident Evil Seven Biohazard oh, just okay. because I could, and. I love that game. It's so good. It's such a good return to form for Resident Evil. Uh, I did two playthroughs of it. I did like a standard normal playthrough, kind of blind playthrough to get to the end, which I played it before. I just want to go back and play through it again, just fresh, re- re-familiarize myself with the story before I go into Village. And then I did a collectible playthrough just because, again, I could and I wanted to because I love that game from start to finish. A lot of people say it falls off towards the like end bit, probably like the last, I don't know, third. If you play Resident Evil 7, it's the boat section where people are like, ah, it falls apart here. But playing through on my normal playthrough, I felt just as tense as I did through the rest of the game. So I don't know if that's something like people just playing on an easier difficulty, which... On my second playthrough, I played through on easy, and as soon as you get the submachine gun, it's just Game standard over. shooter, like mowing through everything yeah. every, all over again. But on normal, and if you completely miss and forget that the submachine gun's even there, it's a bit rougher, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> because you don't have that firepower, and it makes it more of a struggle, and it's kind of what Resident Evil is about, and what I absolutely love from that game. So I'm very okay. excited to jump into Village because uh, I love Resident Evil. Well, new Resident Evil. Five and six so, are a little contested. Yeah. Vince, I haven't played seven yet. It's a very much near the top of my pile for my my pile of shame. Um, but there, there's like I'm so sort of looking forward to like playing through it and then playing Village. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it, always in the back of my mind, it's always mm-hmm. like. Am I ready for that intense, like intensity? Because oh, yeah. you know, I've played, you know, the the 
you know, Resident Evil 5, well, 1 to 6. I say 6. I played a bit of it at 6, but not much of it. Not the best. Because it's crap. Yeah. Um, but this looks really, like, 7 seems really intense. And the fact that it's first person and it just looks really scary. I played the um, the kitchen. Was it kitchen? The, the original, like, demo when that came yeah. out before. Um, but I think at the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, oh, can I do I have the energy? You know, do I have the energy to go through all that? Because yeah. when I do play those kind of games, I do the whole headphones on, lights off, that kind of stuff. And I put myself through the terror. I remember doing that on Alien Isolation and I was just like, oh my God, this is just just wearing me down. Um, but is it is it as scary? Like everyone says it's the scariest one of all the Resident Evils. Is that the case? It's incredibly tense. So yeah. I had played through it before, like years ago, I think a little bit after it had first come out. And so some of that memory was still kind of fresh in my mind. Mm. I also recently watched, which kind of got me onto the wanting to play Resident Evil 7 again, um, Blessing and Andy from Kind of Funny playing through it on the live streams. Mm. So that was still kind of fresh in my mind. Even with that, there are parts that still scare the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it absolutely got me. I knew it was coming. I knew what was going to happen. And it still got me. It's very effective at creating that like disturbing atmosphere. Yeah. That I absolutely love. Cause I mean, it's kind of like a reboot in and of itself. Cause you are in a house, just like in the first resident evil, mm. there is something weird going on that you don't know about, which is like the first resident evil. So it definitely does a good job at modernizing that kind of tense feeling and putting you in first person like point of view absolutely works to its benefit because yeah. it's it's so like tight almost that you can think you can see some some things coming but not really yeah and the sound in that game it's very good at like mm. you know gnawing at the back of your mind like was that something coming at me was that just a yeah. noise that this house was making is that just random atmosphere? It's, it's like it brings um, that intensity. I like love it. PT, mm -hmm. like even just like yep. thinking about PT again, it's giving me like shivers on the back of my yeah. neck. Because like, yeah, that that feeling of like you're or you, it's so tense, and you're waiting for yeah. something to happen the whole time, and you and every time you kind of go through a new loop, you're like, did I see something there? Is this like you know what I mean? And, and oh, mm -hmm. it's just like, and when you see. Uh, I forget her name now. Like when she's just kind of like standing there in the distance, yep. like, twitching. I was nah, 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 nah. nah. But um, but no, that's what I imagine. Oh, I yeah. and, and imagine just playing through Resident Evil Seven is just like playing through whatever it is five six hours of that. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot. It can get to that point because it's, oof. but it's so good. It's like the way they designed it in general is brilliant and. I can't, I don't want to talk too many spoilers, especially if you haven't played Terry. No, no. But I had forgotten they kind of spoil a little bit of something in the very beginning, if you're like paying attention. Right. And then on my playthrough again, I was like, oh, that's a spoiler. And they just put that right there. Yeah. That's yeah. smart. Incredibly smart. But yeah, mm. Resident Evil 7, great game. Great game. I'm hoping Village lives up to it from what I've heard it does. So I'm very excited to play that as soon as I find the time to actually pick it up. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. I um, I did venture to the cinema. Um, oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we all went um, as family. We went to, um, to Norwich. Uh, to the good old View Cinema, yeah. I went to see Peter Rabbit two, which oh, was um, no. which was actually uh, it was it was good. It was really good. I, re I don't know if you've seen the first one. Um, no, it is really good. Like I, I mean, really good. And I uh, before watching the first film, I was like, mm. oh my god, this is going to be terrible. You know, what I mean, this is like mm. a complete cash in film. It's going to be. It's actually really good. It's actually really smart as well. Oh. And um, they're really cleverly done. And yeah, the second one, it's good. If you like the first film, um, it's more of the same. I didn't think it was quite as good as the first one, 
but um no it, it was uh, it was fun it was just nice to be back in the cinema again having a big old bucket of popcorn big old coke zero and um and just watching a film and watching trailers um it was good it was cool good thing yeah I think a quiet place part two is probably going to drive me back to the theaters. That I want to see that movie so bad. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying. Nope. I'm, I'm trying to convince uh, my wife yeah. to to go see that. Just two of us, because I wish I had seen the original in the cinema. I want that experience so for good. the second one. Like, if you ever like want to see like a theater at its absolute quietest. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that. That tense. was the feeling yeah. of uh, the first movie sitting in the theater, and. It was yeah. it was a packed theater. It was a pretty full theater. Yeah. And, and you can't beat everyone, that, can you? That energy yeah. when everyone's in the same, oh. you feel the tension mm-hmm. in the room. Oh yeah. Like just sitting at your seat, like holding on to the arms. So tense, but what a good movie. Oh, such a great what movie. A great, first such a great movie. Speaking of movies, I Took the weekend to watch, to binge watch, back to back, a series of films. Whoa. you done the whole That's Bond, nothing. the whole Bond franchise in, what, a week? Wow. Oh, Vince. no. That's incredible. That man. would be, that probably would have been better <laughs> because I was flipping through Prime Video, Amazon yep. Prime Video, uh, just going through some movies Saturday night, one to you know, find something to watch. I was in a movie mood. Didn't really want to go to the theater because, you know, COVID's still a thing and people don't like to wear masks around here, whether they are vaccinated or not. So I didn't want to risk it just yet, having only my one vaccine dose. Um, so I was flipping through Prime with my wife. And because I was in a Resident Evil mood, on Prime, oh, no. they have the first two Resident Evil movies. Oh, God, Vince, why'd you do that to yourself? Yeah, I did it to myself, and boy, let me tell you, those are some, you know, perfect runtime films. <laughs> perfect runtime. They're each about like an hour and a half long. Yeah. So you could, so it's a breeze, not a good breeze, but <laughs> it's a breeze per so about movie. About 85 minutes too long. Oh, yeah. Because I had forgotten a lot of those movies, even though I do own each one of them on Blu-ray for some reason. I wish I could forget those movies. I've only seen the first one, and I wish I could forget that. Oh, yes. But my favorite part of those movies is when they try to set up the uh, character from the game. Because they do attempt that several different times. And I think what the second movie they introduced Jill. So who? Because I can't even yeah. re- remember. Like M- M- Mila Jokovic. Who? Who? What character yeah. is she? She's just like a made up character in that, or yeah, she's a completely made up character. Yeah, because when it first came oh. out, I always thought she was meant to be Jill, but right, yeah, but no, she's not. She's just a completely made up character named Alice. But when they try to introduce, you know, the game characters. They always try to, at the very end of the movie, they try to hype up the moment like they're going to be like in the franchise for a long time. And then by the next movie, they come up with some excuse just not to have them there because I assume either the actor or actress didn't want to be in a follow-up or what have you. Because yeah. Jill appears in the second movie, is not in the third movie, Player pops up in the third movie is not in the fourth movie man i just watched these films and i do not remember them at all so so do they actually like i know it does the whole umbrella and everything like that but does it actually like tie into the games like is it the same thing or is it just like oh we're just kind of it's a reboot we're doing our own thing uh they talk about the t-virus for like every movie it's always the T virus. Yeah. Like it caused, I don't know, an outbreak. The outbreak spread. It mutated. Yada, yada, yada. You got things like the liquor. The nemesis is in the second movie. Um, they drop the axe guy from, 
uh, Resident Evil 5 into like the fourth movie, maybe? Mm. Yeah, it how, was the fourth many movie. Are there? <laughs> there are six of these movies, by the oh way. There's six of them. But yeah, Claire's in the fourth movie because they took a lot of stuff from Resident Evil 5 to put in the fourth movie. They br- took the axe guy, they took um, the zombies that have like the tentacle mouth thing going on. Um, the chess piece that Jill has in five that like Wesker controls her with. They like take elements, they pick and choose like the elements yeah. they want to take and just make something that's completely not Resident Evil with it. Mm. Which is infuriating because you get Chris and Claire in the fourth movie. They bring in Leon for the fifth movie. Leon Jill who is evil because of the Chet's thing, which they took from five and introduced it in the movie for some reason. I don't know. Again, they just pick and choose and then set up the characters to be in the next movie. But then when the next movie starts, it gives an excuse to be like a time jump or something and the characters aren't in it anymore, which is probably the funniest thing I've seen (laughs) because it ends like the fifth movie end with Alice, Leon, Ada Wong, Jill Valentine, and Albert Wesker standing on top of the White House, looking down upon an army of undead. Face the black credits roll. You're like, oh, this next movie is going to be hype. They're going to like and team up and take on the one. No. The sixth movie starts with Alice by herself in the wasteland of DC. And no one else is there to be found. Like, it, what the hell? makes up these random excuses for them not to be in the movies whatsoever. <laughs> well, at least we're and getting the, um, oh, yeah. this animated one that's going on Netflix. I uh, hope that's hopefully, good. Hopefully that's good. Hopefully. Because I've tried watching some of the CG ones before. and Yeah, I bought one. They're kind of rough, I've got too. one, yeah. um, the one that's set at the airport. <clears throat> the airport with uh, it's Leon and Claire, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it's, it's okay. It's serviceable. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever watch it again, even though I bought it. Um, yeah. yeah. Hopefully that new live action movie is actually okay. I mean, I hope, but I'm holding out very thin hope for that one to be good. Mm. Because obviously we've been burned six times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> by Resident Evil movies. And that, I mean, they're a good time if you want to just sit back and laugh at a movie for yeah. an hour That's and a half. Of, where I'm oh. such a... F- fan of those like that that series like from the beginning i yeah i remember the first time i saw the first oh, one yeah. i was like oh no this is not this isn't my resident yeah. evil i'm sorry it was not <laughs> it was so bad but once but you get the past the tomb raider as well yeah oh yeah the uh, what which one the, the original like what's the, her um, name yeah uh with uh, angelina jolie like when that there first one came That's out right. i was just like this isn't this isn't tomb raider like she's nope. running around fighting this robot spider thing, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, yeah. Wild. What? What? A okay. The really bad set of movies. Those are. Mm. Hey, I got a good time out of it. Well, at least you enjoyed it, Vince. Yeah, I mean, it was it was something to do on a Sunday for sure. But speaking of things to do. Adam, you had something yes. you want to broach on the podcast. Not really. Like, well, yeah, kind of. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you need to so, vent. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Well, no, I don't. No. I, yeah, that's. Yeah. yeah mm, I think I've had people with Jack Daniels. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have a shop in England, but it's not an English shop. It's called Aldi. Oh, yeah. Aldi. Do you have we Aldi in America? Aldi. Oh, yeah. We have Aldi okay. in America. Okay. So. Of course they have. Of course they have. Aldi's dominating yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over so the world. We went into Aldi today mm-hmm. to get, and I quote, because uh, Casey's mom was coming out of hospital, so she wanted to get some chocolates and a card and stuff like that to give to the nurses who looked after her. And also, they'd really liked, we'd taken her in, um, like, do you have, like, Vimto, Ribena, you know, concentrated juice. Um the little squeezy little tubs like this big that you could just squeeze the drops into water. 
Yeah. So these nurses must have been living in a box because they'd never seen these things before and thought they were the greatest things ever. So yeah. uh, she, she wanted to take some of them as well so she could give them to the nurses. So the place I got them from is Aldi. So and it's just down the road. So I was like, okay, we'll go to Aldi. So we went in for three boxes of chocolates. Six <laughs> of these yes. squirty juices and a card, a thank you card. We came out yeah. <laughs> with 20 boxes of decking pallets, like two rattan <laughs> uh, plant pot towers, a Ottoman style outside table, um, as well as the other stuff. Aldi is the weirdest shop in the world. You go in middle aisle, that middle aisle will get you. You've got to be care- oh, careful of well. the middle aisle. Oh, yeah. The middle aisle, and you go down and you go. I don't need these things, but for twenty pounds, I'll take yeah. them. <laughs> so we went in what would have cost us, and I can tell you exactly what it cost us. It's on the receipt, five pound fifty-five. So like, would have cost us for the chocolates, the drink, and the card. Great. Two hundred and twenty-five pounds later, because we just got in and bought all this stuff. We only have a hatchback car, to, like a Peugeot. <laughs> Trying to put these things in there, and it's about yeah. it feels like it's 90 degrees. Like putting all this stuff in this car, like Audi is the weirdest shop in it's the so world. it's so good though. Yeah, I is. literally can't get over how like I, I we don't shop at one as often anymore because no. the closest one to us is like 25 minutes down the road. But like I used everything. to live, I used to live like five minutes yeah. from one, so we used to do our weekly shop from there, and it always amazes me like when you just see. So much like when it's all put through the checkout, like at such a speed, he's like, "Oh my god, I can't." Oh yeah, they don't care. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you, but you see it all, and then you're waiting for the, da- you know, like you're waiting for the damage. Like, okay, yeah. what's this come to? Mm-hmm. Without obviously getting stuff from the middle aisle. Yeah. Um, and you're like, "Wow, that's that's good. That's like yeah. I got a lot of stuff for uh, <laughs> not a lot of money." <laughs> I know. Yeah, you, you exactly. always compare. You always come and go. How much do you think this cost? Yeah, How yeah, much yeah. Do you yeah, think this yeah. And, no, 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 it's only this. and it's all really good. Like really yeah. good. Like yeah. some of their stuff, their own stuff, is better than uh, you know like other brand stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's. I just can't believe it. Like we went in, and then I was kind of because we had an electrical fire on the lawnmower this weekend as well. Like um, I mentioned off air, and <laughs> I was just mowing really? the lawn. And this is the second time I've used the lawn mower. Now I needed to buy a strimmer. The first time I mowed the lawn, I couldn't do the edges. It was a really thick outer layer to the mower, um, so it wasn't really right for the garden. So I needed to buy a strimmer. So I went round and I strimmed the outside of the garden because that was really overgrown. And I thought, okay, I'm going to mow the grass and then strim down to the level. I did maybe two lines in the in, in the garden, and then I could smell some smoke. No, that, no. That's weird. Is that coming from some yeah. barbecue? And then I looked down at the barbecue, and I could see flames and smoke coming out the middle of my uh, – sorry, my, uh, my lawnmower. I see flames and smoke coming out of the middle of my lawnmower. I was like, well, that's not good. So I um, yeah. obviously unplugged it, kind of took it off the grass and just kind of left it because you I, I don't have a – a fire extinguisher, you can't pour water on it, it's an electrical fire. Mm. So I was kind of like, Well, if this goes on fire, uh, I'm gonna walk away. Yeah. Uh, but what the problem that that there's now left is my garden has two strips of lawn that is mowed, and then the rest of it is overgrown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm trying to get this garden nice. I'm not a gardener, I am not a gardener, I have no patience for it. It is yeah. shit. People who do gardening, I applaud you because it is shit. And I just yep. want to have a nice garden. I bought the decking stuff. I'm going to do it myself um, and all of this. And I just want to mow my lawn. Stop making it so complicated. Like yeah. my father-in-law used to do yeah. gardening. So he gives me a lot of tips, but um, he's injured. My plan was when we got this garden is he would do it, but he's hurt his shoulder. So he can't do it. So I'm fucked because now I have to do it. So I'm ringing him going, so mowing the lawn, it's like, yeah, you have to start at the higher setting and then work your way down so you don't scorch your lawn and stuff like this. And I was like, I have to mow it more than once. Why did they make it so complicated? Why can't it just be, yeah, do your lines, it's done. It's like, no, you've got to get it at the right level. They've got to get trying to get it in a straight line. Like it's oh. a whole science. And I honestly, I'm oh, right there I with you, Adam. Like, I'm I'm not a gardener. I don't enjoy doing it. 
um when we got our first house and we the, when we bought the house the the garden was in such a state it was like mm. absolutely terrible like it was the worst thing i'd ever seen so that was the first thing we did and we spent a lot of money on getting that garden done yeah. and when i had all new lawn put down mm-hmm. we had this amazing i've never seen lawn like it since then like this lawn that was put down and it was just like a putting green like you know yeah. and i got yeah. obsessed with it like i was like yeah putting you know making sure it's okay i was putting the seeds down on my hands and knees like and i was dreaming about it i was like going to sleep like just dreaming about like my garden lawn and (laughs) and then after that i just like i was like i can't can't deal with this anymore like and i've I've never been like that since and um i I had to mow my lawn this week and it was the longest it's ever been it was literally like a jungle and um i don't have i've never had a plug uh, electric plug-in one uh lawnmower i don't trust them don't know why i don't like the idea of having something outside particularly if it could start raining that's yeah. plugged into my house but we've got i've got like a um like a chargeable battery one like that so um but anyway and i should have really strimmed this lawn because it was bad but i was, I was just going straight in straight in with a lawnmower and i'm like and every now and again it would stop because it just couldn't take it i'm just like come on you can do this you can do this and um we finally got it done but at one point we had to go out because we was going out for dinner with my parents and um i'd only done half the lawn and i really wanted to finish it before we went but i couldn't and um so i left the house with half the lawn just completely cut neat and the half a half like a jungle it must look ridiculous if the neighbors oh, were looking over great. oh god no it's Fantastic. terrible it's, it's just terrible. a nightmare though i hate it they make it so complicated man like it doesn't need to be that difficult like mm-hmm. but they do it's always like you have to do things such a certain way. And then I thought, and this is me being stupid, the front of our house has bark. You know, we have a, we don't really have a garden at the front. It's like a little bit. And yeah. down the side, there's some bark and some, and they put some plants in and some trees. I didn't think weeds could go through bark. Oh, yeah. We, apparently they can. Yeah. They'll go yeah. through yeah. concrete. They'll go through they anything. Sure um, oh. I didn't realize that we, we've got bark like running down yeah. the sides of the garden. I didn't realize the little piece of shit birds, they go and just like ch- start chucking it all into the path. Do you, 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 you have birds? That do, they yeah, yeah. just like the whole place is a mess them. every day. Yeah. And I'm like, sweep it, sweep it back in. Like, it's just too much maintenance, too much going on. Oh, I've got to water the plants again. Oh, I've got to like pick this up, get rid of the dead leaves. Nah, I'm saying how bad, I'll tell home. you how bad it got. Like, when I was mowing the lawn and there was an electrical fire after I'd bear in mind, I'd spent about three days trying to strim this fucking thing. Cause it kept raining every time I got halfway around. So I'd, I'd go out and start strimming. The rain would be coming. Oh shit. Like yeah, throwing yeah. everything in. By once, once the electrical fire happened and I kind of just gave up, I sat inside and my search history was astral turf. Oh, astral turf. <laughs> just trying to get astral, like fake yeah, grass put down. Grass. Thought, you know I'm not mowing this shit. I'm going to get fake no, grass. Yeah. It's going to look perfect, and I won't have to touch it again. But no, Casey wants real grass. But then we've got a dog who is great. Won't do, he's never done anything in the house. Loves a piss in the garden, though. And I swear, because the amount of tablets he's on, his piss is basically acidic. Because anywhere yeah. he even goes to the toilet marks. once, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like mm-hmm. you, and he only goes in one spot in the garden. So you look one side, it's like a jungle. The other side is like the elephant graveyard from Lion King. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> so I'm trying to mold the lawn. Yeah. And then I get to this point when I'm like, it's like a fucking crater. What am I going to do here? So now, because of the fucking mud, I have to now, I'm going to mm-hmm. have to put a fence and a little gate bit. So he only goes in that area so he can have that patchy. Then the rest of the garden can look nice. Like I'm fucking Alan Titchmarsh over here, like <laughs> go, like doing garden force. Like like I know what I'm doing. I'm there looking mm. on YouTube about how to lay decking. Like, like my God, I didn't sign up for this. You know, when you think you're buying a house and you're going to have yeah. a nice house, mm. you're like, oh, this is really great. It's our own house. It's going to be so good. Someone has to do that fucking garden. Yeah. Like, and, and then Casey gets pregnant. She's the one who wanted the garden, so she's useless. Like she just stands at the window going, You need to do over there, you need to do over there. And I'm like, I'll fucking do over there in a minute. Like I'll dig a grave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate garbage. Oh, so I, I just hate it. I hate it. So yeah, there there is my rant on gardening. So good. So good. I hate it. The the Perks of being a homeowner. 
Do you have a garden or do you have a yard? What do you have? I have a yard. What are you talking about? A yeah, full ass yard front and back. <laughs> That's the way. Concrete's the way. I never had a garden growing up. We had like yeah. a we were in a terrace house, we had a yard. There was no grass. Mm-hmm. So and any yeah. house I've lived in was basically flat, so it had balconies, it didn't never had grass. Grass sucks. I'll tell you that now. Yeah. It sucks. It grows way too fast, especially during the spring and summer months. Yeah. The bees yeah. love it, though. Come on. Yeah, well, like bees. I'm scared know. of bees and wasps. Like, I'm allergic to bees and wasps, please. Uh, You're allergic? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, allergic. I'm it's not rough. Allergic. Yeah. I, when I was four, we had, like, in my yard, we had, like, one of those Playmobil, like, Wendy houses for my cousin. Yeah. Like, and there was a bee in the, gar- in the, in the garden of the yard, like, flying around. We had, like, mm. hanging baskets. And I, I was just following it, pretending to be a bee, you know, because that's the kid <laughs> I was. Yeah. Like, okay. And it flew over the wall. So I climbed on top of the Wendy house a little bit. We had steps to the side of it, kind of like paving bits. You see where it had gone. And it turned and it turned and it must have been just on the other side. Anyway, it stung me. I think oh, it was yeah. actually a wasp, but not a bee. I fell off the Wendy house and broke my arm. <laughs> so I broke my yeah. arm. Went to the hospital, obviously. Well, I got shouted at first because I broke the Wendy house. Uh, while I, Because my arm, you couldn't tell, was broken. There wasn't like a bone sticking out of it. Um, so they sent me for a nap with a broken arm, may I point out. Uh, still complaining. Yeah, yeah. They took me to the yeah. hospital. They said it was broken. Obviously, they put a cast on it. So when I got home, um, my grandma was running me a bath. Um, mm. I, I was only four. I can't run my own. So... What, what I used to love doing is, you know, when you put the bubble bath in and you sh- rub your hand to make the bubbles. Yeah. So she had gone to answer the phone. So I put the bubble bath in. But I didn't know you couldn't put your cast into the water. Oh, no. So I put oh, my no. cast in the water and started doing the bubbles. Now, what it, I, it sticks to your arm. Mm-hmm. Like, so it stuck to my skin. So they had to take the cast off yeah. and it took some of my skin off. So this whole ordeal came from being stung by a by a wasp, which was entirely my own fault. But uh, yeah, so from then. Does, does that mean does oh, that mean a wasp oh, yeah. broke your arm? Well, yeah, a, a, a wasp at a Wendy house yeah. broke my arm. Yeah, right. but I'm not scared of Wendy houses. <laughs> just just the wasps, yeah. Like I can see that. Well, we'll we'll see. Well, yeah, I don't. I I, I think. I don't think I'd push my child in front of a wasp if it was coming towards me, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens at the time. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, we're, we're not completely instinct, ruling it out. Yeah, yeah, instinct does some some strange things. We'll have to wait and see. I've got off trains. I've been on a train to London and got off at Stratford upon Avon because I there was a wasp in the carriage, like, and it was flying near me, and I didn't want to panic, <laughs> so I casually got up and just got off the train. Yeah, that's me with spiders all day long. At least that's more of a rational fear, though, spiders. Yeah, but I mean, I've got a serious, serious phobia of spiders, particularly phobia. things like, like um, tarantulas or anything like that. I can't even, I can't even look at a picture of a tarantula. That's how bad it is. I can't look at, I physically oh, can't look at a picture. Yeah, yeah. Creepy little fuckers. Mm-hmm. I'm not too bad with them. I don't think oh, I would yeah. be good with big ones. I can yeah. remove the ones from my house, like spiders, but no, nah, I don't think I'd bother. The massive no. spiders? No. No, 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 no. No living in Australia then. No, definitely no. not. I'd love to go to Australia, but I would the whole mm-hmm. time I would be Struggle. shitting myself like that. You know what I might find because I if I if there was like something like that, like one of the big ones in the wherever I was staying, I would just burn the place down to the ground. Standard, it's the standard response. Sounds <laughs> about right. Yeah. Yeah. I Are you okay sleep. with like scorpions or is it? Just yeah, no, purely that's fine. Spiders? It's purely the spider. Yes, yeah, purely spiders. Okay. Purely spider. Yeah, it's a common one, isn't it? Arachnophobia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I watched the Pokemon this once actually, and they were trying to. It was uh, they were trying to find out what because most phobias there's like a thing like you say, oh, you're scared of this thing because of this, yeah. and with spiders, yeah. they can't tie it down to what it is. Like they've like researched so many different people. There's not like one thing about it. Like you know, it, so it could be mm-hmm. like if they're like hairy, or if they're like the way they move, or the amount of legs. Like there's they, just like. It's not one particular thing. It's like um. It is a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah every, like so many people have it, and they just it, it, I don't know what it is. Like why? It's such a strange thing. But yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of like 
I always put it down to our body's instinct. Mm. Our body kind of naturally knows stuff to be scared of, right, for evolution. Yeah. And I'm guessing at one point spiders were a bigger problem than they are now. Yeah. Oh. It's like we are, a lot of people have a natural fear of the open water, you know, mm. that True. vast nothingness of water, like in the ocean. And I think that comes from that natural human fear, you know. Mm. But, yeah. but Vince, do you have any uh, phobias or fears? Phobias, heights. Can do heights. Not heights guy. Mm. No. Like I can I can be in a pretty tall building. Like I've stayed in like hotels and stuff, like up on the upper floors and stuff like that. Yeah. And as long as I'm in a room, I'm totally fine. Or I can look out the window and be totally fine. It's that problem when you get to like an edge or something and you look down. And that's that's the worst part of it because it's you know different seeing something from a distance you know whether you're high up or not but it's definitely different like being on like the edge because when i was younger i went to like um new york went to like the empire mm-hmm. state building and everything yeah, i was gonna say yeah. uh yeah like being in the building itself not too terrible being out like on the terrace and everything where you can like get close to the edge of the wall. You can like see actually down. That's when it starts like kicking in real hard. Mm-hmm. But like things like video games, totally fine. Like I definitely understood like if anybody's played the last of us part two, mm-hmm. there's a specific character that has a fear of heights yeah. and they represent it pretty well. I have to say very well. Yeah. Like that, like anxiety that like trembling. It's Freeze. 100% relatable. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. But yeah. definitely. So could, what about really? roller coasters or anything? Is that absolutely no, not? Like, no. Cannot do this. I did one once, like this was a few years back. I think when me and my wife were dating, mm-hmm. we went to because, like, living in North Carolina near Charlotte, there is um, I'm completely blanking on the name of the theme park. But it straddles the North Carolina South Carolina border. Carowinds, that's the name. Okay. Um, so it's it's a major, like huge art with like roller coasters, all sorts of shit like that. Um, and we went on uh, Thunder Road, I think it's called. It may be named something different now, but they change names like every so often. But it's wooden, which is also adds a bit more element of absolutely fucking terrifying because every time you feel the shake from it. And like it's gonna fall mm. apart. So we went on it like I was okay, you know, afterwards. I was a bit shaken, either from the adrenaline or the fear, the just the rush. But so like never again. Never again. Even like you know, you see at some parks they have the one that like just goes up and then just like drops you. Absolutely not. You will I would be a, you'd have to drag my corpse onto that thing in order to get me on it, because <laughs> you are not taking me alive on that thing. I love a good roller coaster. Yeah, I love roller coasters. Yeah. I used to be terrified. I used to, you know what? I used to be terrified of roller coasters. Wouldn't go on them. Hated them. Fucking hated them. Wouldn't go on them. I don't know about as a mm. young teenager. And I remember once, we had a place where I grew up called Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Mm. And it, for a long time, had the tallest roller coaster in the world. Yeah. Like, and then, but now I think it's the second. Was it, was it the Pepsi? The, the, the big one, the Pepsi, the Pepsi Max, the big one, when it is its actual name. Yeah. yeah. Um, and would never go anywhere near it. I couldn't even do like the medium sized ones. I just hated roller coasters. Mm-hmm. And me and my friend Scott used to go all the time and do the Dodgems, Valhalla. They had a ride there. It was like a water ride, but it was like inside Vikings. That was great. And we'd do some of the rides. But we never do any of the big roller coasters. Anyway, we must have been 17 or 18. And Ooh. we went and Scott took his girlfriend at the time. And she brought a friend. And obviously, I was like the to be there for the friend, you know, the third. So there wasn't a third wheel sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And they really <laughs> wanted to go on these roller coasters. And 
Garth was like, <laughs> we need we, we need an excuse not to go on these. <laughs> like we need an excuse. So we'd go in the long way round, try to put it off so the park would shut and we'd miss them. <laughs> All they wanted to do was go on That's these brilliant. roller coasters. Like there was like uh-huh. infusion, uh, which was like the first time I'd ever seen one where you were strapped in like this and your feet were dangling. I'd never yeah. seen these really roller coasters because I'd never been to all yep. the towers at this point. Um, and then there was the big one. And um, infusion was smaller, but it had like loops. Whereas the big one is just really tall and fast. Mm. So, and they were, let's go on the big one, let's go on the big one. And they would, that's all they were there for. They look, and we were like, nah, mm. nah, let's get some food. I'm starving. Then we'll go in it. We'll join the, oh, the queue's too long. Mm. All of this. Nah. Eventually they started to twig. And I just went, nah, let's go do it. Fuck it. And me and we, and obviously theme parks, the queue is so long. And oh, you get it's... around and then you just hear the, as it goes flying past you continuously and every time he's got like like we must have been ghosts and we were getting around and when you're getting into your thing it's two and two and he was sat going to sit with her and he said oh no i'm gonna sit with adam on this one you girls go together so we sat behind them shitting ourselves for the whole ride (laughs) so they couldn't see (laughs) as they were arms in the air loving it and me and Scott were just eyes closed. And you're like, like arms in the air, passed out. Yeah. It? Yeah. it is a, I, if you want to search it, like search the big one at yeah. Blackpool, uh, uh, Vince. And we were, we were going up because you go straight around and it's up. And yeah. it is 250 feet or something in the air. Like, and we're going, mm-hmm. I'm sh- we're shaking. And they're going, this is incredible. Look at the view. We're like, yeah. Like this. We did it. <laughs> and yeah. I loved it. Once yeah. we've gone over that drop, that's it. And how can you not? But I've not, I've not done. I've not um, been to Blackpool. I've not been on the big one. But I have a. I used to, when I used to go to school. Um, a friend of mine. He used to go there all the time on holiday, and he was obsessed yeah. with it. He'd, every time he go there, he'd go on like every single mm. seat that you can go on on it. Yeah. Like just keep going on it. Um, but no, I'd like, I would like to try that one. But I'm I'm not. Um, scared of heights or anything like but but the one mm. thing that i've never been on and i've always looked at it, i was like oh no i don't fancy that is the the bungee ball no i can't you know, do that yeah no, not like because oh, in tenerife that. they always yeah, had them yeah. there and everything yeah. just spring you up and um yeah i just That's gonna i don't snap i ain't doing that yeah exactly i don't know if it's more of a just a i don't trust it thing i don't know why i just don't nah not my i don't because i'm not no. i'm not into things that just like, literally just throw you up and that's it because mm-hmm. I don't, you know, don't I like roller coasters for the speed, for the yeah, the adrenaline. The adrenaline and, and I don't just... want to be hurled up in the air in a yeah. cage. No, no, especially no. have you seen like the videos of the people that like pass out like when they're screaming oh, yeah. and they just like yeah snoring. No, <laughs> no yeah. I've seen the video where the guy they put the <laughs> windows uh, load up music to the guy and then the log off music every time that like, the guy <laughs> passed out. He's like dun dun dun. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Like it was brilliant. No, yeah, I can't do that. But yeah, I was once I'd done that one, like I was a fiend for it. I was yeah. like, right, like, let's go on fusion, yeah. let's and I dragged him around and he got better at them. Um, but he was quite nervous about heights anyway, so it was a big I was better at heights um than him. But yeah, then I went to Autumn Towers and they have like the smiler, which is ridiculous. Oh yeah, Autumn Towers have got um uh, well, they've got the, probably the best rides in the country, on Towers. Yeah, really. they, they, there's some there's some great ones there. What's the um, I can't think. Nemesis is it Nemesis or is that Nemesis? Actual? There, there's yeah. Oblivion. Oblivion. Air. Yeah, Air's, Air's cool. Really she like laid you down. Lay yeah. down on That's that really one. Cool. What about yeah. have you have you been on Space Mountain in uh, Disney Disneyland? Or? Yeah, I like that one. I like Space that one. Mountain is my favorite roller coaster. It's just so cool. That's, I love that roller coaster What's so the much. Aerosmith one, the rock and rolling coaster. No, I've not been on that. <laughs> there's that. It's Disneyland yeah. Paris, and the, oh, right. that's one of them where it's a quick, it's an inside one, but it's a quick start launch. Yeah, uh, and then it's like looped all inside and stuff like. That. But there's yeah. a song specifically written by Aerosmith that <laughs> plays in your speaker as you go around. Of course, there is. Right. But course. it's a terrible song, and it was written like it, it came out basically because they did this whole area when Armageddon came out. So oh, yeah. it's the same era, and then there's an Armageddon ride there, which I thought this is going to be great, and something that I cannot tolerate cannot tolerate is those interactive experiences at theme parks mm. or stuff like that. And I, I was on a date with Casey 
like when we were in yeah. Disney, because like, when I was working in between seasons, I flew to, we both flew to Paris to spend the weekend together. So we thought we'll go to Disney. And we, mm. she was like, oh, there's Armageddon here. So I was like, yeah, that's a good film, you know, interesting ride. I thought you'll be on the asteroid or something, you know, maybe in the, in the lunar rover going around or whatever it was. No, you just led through rooms with actors speaking in English and French. <laughs> and like you stand there, the effects go off, and they're all like, Quick, "Come, come!" And I'm like, "I hate this, like with a passion. Like I can't do it. I hate those sort of uh, yeah. interactive." Yeah. So yeah, theme parks are fun though, but not well. Obviously not for humans. But do you well, like? No. W- would you do the rides that are low down, like just the fast ones that have no height to them, or do you just not really like roller coasters mm. in general? Not a big fan of coasters in general. Yeah. Okay. What about the dodge jumps? The what? Bumper the dodge jumps. Bumper cars. Oh, okay. Bumper cars. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's like not much for theme parks for me. Not much wow. to theme parks for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Vince yeah. is now yeah. leaving Shifty Crab. Let me just uh, <laughs> close him out of the call. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. There's um. Oh, yeah. There's um, a water park in Tenerife called Siam Park. Mm-hmm. It's That's absolutely incredible. It's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And um, they have a slide there called the um, Tower of Power, which is so cool. And um, amazing. it's like terrifying. A slide, right. it, it, yeah. The slide you yeah. literally just like kind of lay down, arms crossed. And it's not like mm-hmm. vertical or anything there, but it, it's pretty steep. You, you got, because it's all like Thai like themed um, like park and you got this kind of big temple. And um, the first time mm-hmm. I did that, I was like, you know, you because it's a long. It was a because it's a busy ride. It's a long, long queue, and you're going up these stairs, up, 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 and and when you get to the top, you're like, oh my god, your leg starts going. You're like, thinking, oh my god, like because you can see how much of a drop it is, and yeah. and um, you see so many people coming down, back down the stairs where they've like, yeah. and their hair's yeah, wet, like, where nah. they've like laid down to do it, and they're just like their bottle mm-hmm. just goes like, nope, nope, nope. Anyway, but you go down and you shoot straight down and then you go through a t- like a tube like underwater which is a like a large pond filled with sharks so it's like you shoot yeah. through it so yeah. you can like so at the bottom you can kind of just like watch people coming through like you can sit and just watch Ooh. the sharks and then you see the person like go through the like the tank like, like a bullet but it's so cool it's so cool. It's a it's a great ride, but that's um yeah that's I imagine something like that would be like your, your worst fear. Would it be it's like a high water slide? Just a high up there, yeah. Nothing just like plummeting. No. Nothing holding you in. Just get out of here. Oh no. Oh god. Like the water miss- parks though, in general, are fun. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, those rides, I can do pretty well. You know, they they don't go up like super high. There's some like. I went on like younger and then kind of more recently we went to like Florida to the Disney world there or whatever. It was universal, the universal park we went to. They had the Jurassic park, like water ride. Oh, which, the log flume. Yeah. They were just like, you know, the water ride, not too bad. Yeah. Then towards the end of it there, you start to go up. Yeah. You, know, you go through the little like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. covered area. T-Rex jumps out like, here they buy shitless, and then you drop. Yeah, which was like, I mean, it was terrifying at first, but then it's actually kind of pretty fun. But yeah. you know, that that initial just like, oh shit, we're fucking dropping now. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out of me for like a second. Yeah, it was good right. times. You know, I mean, there's always something to do at theme parks. That I always find to do. Don't ever remember yeah, much of it even, anyway. Even but the, yeah. ga- the games are good there usually. You know, you can have a bit of fun yeah. and. Uh, if they, they're not all thrill rides, you know, you can do the mm. little rides as mm. well, which can be equally as fun, especially if you've had yeah. a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. w- initially when you, we went, like, when, I don't know, not necessarily when the Harry Potter thing opened, but, you know, before Rowling was an utter piece of trash, you know. Yeah. Uh, t- just came out as a terrible human being. You know, happy Pride Month. Fuck you, J.K. Rowling. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. That was actually kind of interesting to explore, not being like a super big Harry Potter fan or anything, but it was cool. I'd rather go to like 
the Galaxy's Edge at Disney World now. Oh, that seems oh like God, a so fun bad. time. So bad. So bad. Did you see the message I put in Slack today, Terry? I know you've been at work. Well, um, about the, the rumored uh, theme park opening in the UK, America, oh, yeah. and Australia. Yeah. Sega World. I did see that. I did see that. Um, hmm. It's got you written all over it. Can you imagine a roller coaster Sonic? Like, well, they used to have Sonic oh. uh, on Towers, Sonic Pinball, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was everywhere at one point. Uh, it's like, I know it's obviously not a theme park, but Sega, Sega World, like, and Sega Park. Uh, good memories. Yeah. You're just memories. in the queue. Mm. It probably would be. Since we're tying this back to video games, there's one more topic I want to broach before we close this show out. So I was thinking the other day, you know, shower thoughts, just sitting there, you know, getting clean, popped into my head. Sorry, 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 sorry. Before yeah, we go, go on, ahead. sitting there. Well, not sitting there. Standing there as you do in the shower. You, sit, you just have a sit down in your shower. <laughs> you might have had. You never seen no. those showers with the seats in them. No, but I, this is just. I've seen. I've seen a thing. shower. I've but seen no. a shower once with like two seats in it for a couple. These things exist, but uh, if you know. a couple in a shower. I don't think there'll be seats. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. That depends. But anyway, <laughs> no. standing there. If I'm using, you know, yeah, just a phrase. You know, standing there, having a bit of shower, and the thought occurred to me. If you could completely erase your memory of one game and replay it again for the very first time, what game would that be? And then I thought of a little caveat there. You still maintain your memory of games that have come after it. So if it's like a franchise, like say, if you want to pick like Uncharted 2, you still have the memory of Uncharted 1, 3, 4, and Lost Legacy. Would that still make that particular game special still to you? Or would it... Would, do you think your reaction to that game still be the same mm. as this, you remember this, it being? I was going to ask that about the Kevin because mm. I was going to say, like... Because um, then that changes things a lot, doesn't it? Oh, because, yeah. like, Uncharted 2, for instance... Mm-hmm that's such a you know a standout game for me because mm-hmm. when i first played it it was like i hadn't seen anything else like it but if mm-hmm. if my memory is retained from the games that come after it it's not going to seem that special to me i'm going to be comparing it against right. those games um exactly. so but it's hard to really thought, think yeah. of a game that mm-hmm. would stand out and wouldn't be affected by that unless right. it was something very recent you know like a new game right I have like, two. Okay. Mm. You have two. Interesting. Yeah. Obvious ones, but I think, I, yeah. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. Because that's an incredible See, I don't story. remember that in general. So. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm already uh, there. <laughs> and it's a toss-up, but I think... Oh, well, hang on. No, it might not be a toss-up. Yeah, The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. So that's the I, was thinking, bet. I was thinking GTA 5 mm. uh, because it is a really good story, but I don't think it's as impactful as a story as Last of Us Part 2. So yeah, they'd be my two. Yeah. Red Dead Part 2. Well, Red Dead 2 and Last of Us Part 2. I think they're probably the stellar storytelling mm. games anyway of the current generation of games, I think. Good choices, though. Like, mm. Thank you. I tried my hardest. But I was thinking, like, you know, Last of Us, Last of Us Part Two, which would be, you know, more stand out. Obviously, Last of Us Part Two definitely benefits from one, and it'd be hard to go back, you know, play through one again fresh, having played two yeah. before it. You know, that was, that was with your caveat. Otherwise, it would be oh, the yeah. first one that I'd play. But yeah, oh, I think mm-hmm. I'd probably go with Bioshock. Good choice. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Because that was such a like playing it the first time. I'd never seen anything like it, mm-hmm. and, and I think I pretty much what I was saying in one of our debates. Like, I don't think we've seen much similar since. You know what I mean? Like, so I still, I oh, still yeah. think even if that was released now, 
Mm. Like if they, I would just feel like, wow, this is so, so different. Um, and I'd love to experience that again for the first time. Like I'll never forget playing that demo for the first time on my, on my Xbox 360. And I just kept replaying it and replaying it and replaying it. Just perfect. That just, no. especially because I didn't really know much about what it was. Um, yeah. and so the way it just kind of like unfolds, I was like, oh, wow, this, I just love this world, the story, everything mm. about it. So yeah, I'd love to experience that again. And I think it would hold up in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, plus it's neither, you know, sequel to Bioshock are really like linear, you know? Yeah. Because even like Bioshock 2, while still taking place in Rapture, mm. the different character, different kind of story, same with Infinite. Yeah. So you yeah, still yeah. kind of preserve that, you know, first experience with Bioshock itself. Yeah. So very good choice. It's a very, very good choice. choice. That's oh, a yeah. good choice. And I don't think Bioshock 2 impacts Bioshock 1 enough that you wouldn't enjoy the story. Oh, no. No, oh, yeah. no. I think, yeah, yeah, I think it's a great choice. What about you, Vince? What What did you think of while you sat in your shower? <laughs> See, uh, I was debating this one a lot, too, because, you know, obviously I love Gears. You're doing what in the shower? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a master debater here. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That, that that would be uh, your honor. That'd be me, probably. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I had a while to think on this because obviously I thought of it, you know, a while ago. Just sat in the shower thinking, debating, and thinking think what I wanted that. to pick. <laughs> and honestly, I don't really have a super good answer. Like, part of me wants to say Resident Evil Seven because obviously I haven't played eight yet, and going through again recently was having forgotten some of it and have it you know react reacting to it the way i had this last playthrough even playing it like years ago and forgetting all that it's still a good time playing you know Mm. that or like one of the math specs but then like they're all such a trilogy but a singular game in a way that you have that basically three act structure you have the beginning the middle and the end and it works so well together so if you pluck one of those out it's not gonna work you yeah it's not gonna work super well and of course i went with terry i thought bioshock because i think that story holds up super well and you can probably definitely go back and play through it again as a first time experience with fresh eyes even having played the sequels a pretty good question putting it to you yeah so i think yeah Sorry, go on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I've got another one. Um, Hotline Miami. Um, and I, even though oh, there's two, and, you know, I I would like, I, I, I enjoyed one more, and I'd like mm. to just enjoy that feeling again of playing that game for the first time. Because um, oh, yeah. the first, I remember playing that through the first time, I just, that game consumed me, like everything about mm. it. And, um, yeah just so again something that was just so different and um i've i've not felt so i've not like played something like that in a long time that's made me feel like that playing that game yeah yeah, yeah if i wasn't taking story into consideration mm-hmm. probably metal gear solid 2 would be mm. one of my options because well, yeah. i really enjoyed playing that game like the story of that game i actually have another question that I, I was going to pitch. Uh, it's a quick one, yeah. um, game related, um, that I was thinking about the other day while I was having a bath. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Obviously, we know a lot of games that are coming in the next four years or whatever. We have quite a big selection of games that are in works or that we already know. If you could take all of your life savings your house and everything. And you had to gamble on one of those games being an absolute 100% success. Critically, financially, will all will be revered as an absolutely phenomenal 10 out of 10, whatever way you want to look at it game. Which game would you bet on? Uh, out of what, mm. sorry? Out of any game that we know is mm. in development. Hmm. Right. Like from now in the near future, it doesn't have to be close to being finished. We just know it's in development. 
you had to bet everything you own on one of them being a mm-hmm. surefire win, right? In yeah. any way you want to look at it, financially, yeah. critically, all of them. It has to tick all of the boxes. Yeah. Which one would you bet on being that? Well, I got mine because, you know, I'm probably going to steal yours here, Adam. Uh, God of War Ragnarok. Oh, wow. Okay. I think That's there's no way that game is a failure at all. I like, think it'd be very hard off the back. Oh yeah. yeah, off the back of God of War, what was it, 2017, 2018? 2018, yeah. Um, off the back of that, there's a lot of hype going into it, and you still see it today when Sony put out that one image of like, what was it, the PS3 launch lineup, and then compared to the PS5 and everything. Yeah. And people were freaking out that the God of War Ragnarok is what it's going to be called. That's the logo for it. Like people are scrounging for any bit of information for that game. So I feel like it'd be really hard for that game not to be a 10 out of 10 or do financially well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a safe, solid bet. Yeah. Betting everything on on it, why not? (laughs) What about you, Terry? What springs to mind for you? Uh, I think the obvious one is obviously like GTA 6, right? I mean, we know, we just know like it's it's going to be the biggest selling game of all time we know it's gonna it's in good hands it's gonna be whether it's a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten it's gonna be good you know you can always and whatever whatever naughty dog like do next you just yeah there's there's just certain studios you can just count on to until we actually see them drop the ball like santa monica studios naughty dog like you just know like they're in in good hands until naughty dog puts out a, a cars two (laughs) <laughs> they've yeah. been just putting out just absolute yeah. solid um solid yeah, things so yeah so. yeah um well so i mean i mean insomnia I, I feel like insomniac mm. could get in there now as well like mm. insomniac are at that level where it's just like you know uh, off what straight off the bat they've done oh, yeah. spider-man um i mean even going back to 2016 like ratchet and clank 2016 spider-man <laughs> mars morales, morales now rift apart which uh, looks fantastic like they're becoming another like Naughty Dog like sure sure thing, especially like the the amount of like quality they're putting out. Yeah, I what think that's a, a good one. Yeah, what I said. Yeah, I think if I and I am a betting man, like it would be GTA Six purely yeah. for. I think there's certain games that fanfare will get you over the line anyway. Yeah, and I think yeah. the hype for GTA Six will cover any cracks that there may be. Yeah. Um, and I don't think there'll be many because you're right. There are certain studios that just produce excellence in gaming. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. in a, like and it might not appeal to everyone, but no. you look at Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, it's a polarizing game. And some people really didn't like the, the pace of it and stuff like that. But that mm. game still critically yeah. is a masterpiece. Financially, some it was people, great. Like, the op- Red Dead Redemption Online, exists. not so good. Yeah, ter- uh, Vince always forgets it exists. But then, yeah, <laughs> yep. you what look at GTA, about? and we obviously talked about this when it was just me and you, Terry, on, on the podcast. GTA is how a, a lot of people judge where they were in gaming when those games came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like San Andreas, Vice Cities, and more modern. You can kind of remember where you were when the GTA games came out. I yeah. remember watching the trailers for the first time. Oh. So I just think GTA 6 is just a sure fire mm-hmm. home run whenever we do see that. And I think it's very hard for you. Yeah. For example, you, I don't think you could bet on a single Ubisoft studio being able to do that. Even no, though no, they make no. great games, there's the hit and miss. Yeah. And I think even Square Enix, they, even though they absolutely excelled at the Final Fantasy VII remake part one, yeah, they could drop the ball. There, there was a time. There was a time yeah. like back when it was SquareSoft, like you know, yeah. during the PlayStation One. They were the, for me, the they pinnacle. were like that. They were the yeah. naughty dog yeah. of that time. Like you just knew whatever they were going to put out was going to be excellent. You know, after like Final Fantasy, like they had like moments of greatness before, but ever since like Final Fantasy Six, even before that, you had like um like uh, Chrono Trigger and stuff like that. But they were just like literally just one thing after the other, just like absolute mm-hmm. just and then there was the dark the, the, ages, the, the, so. the, yeah then then they went for the dark yeah. ages because um yeah because they just kind of like did the whole kind of resting on they didn't adapt with and then this happened to a lot of japanese studios they just didn't adapt to the modern times and they got left behind mm-hmm. but 
But um, yeah, I think there's a few studios which are just a, a like you said, Santa Monica, Naughty Dog, Rockstar. You just it's know whatever they're going to do, they're going to push mm-hmm. things forward. You know, and everyone else follows um, and they, they just kind of they take things to. And so we're so lucky that we have those, you know, like those, yeah. those studios doing oh, those yeah. things. You just know that you can count on them to be doing this like and, and moving things. Because if we didn't, we're just, you know, we could just see the medium just kind of get stuck in a rut for like 10 years. Yeah, I suppose the other thing, like the flip side of this is, and obviously we, we try to be as positive as we can on the podcast and, the, mm. and on Newsbreak and on the channel in general. But if you... Which game coming out are you most worried about? Mm, Maybe not getting the reception. Maybe not getting the reception they might deserve, or it just doesn't. Something that looks well. promising and it. And it it's yeah, yes, but we've had plenty of them, like plenty like of them. Cyber, like a like cyberpunk, cyber, cyberpunk or Watchdog Legions was a, quite a mess yeah. when it was released. Uh, yeah, like the obvious one would be Halo, I guess, because of the yeah. hype. And the, the, guess, the, yeah. the importance of it, it's yeah. very easy for that game not to hit the mark because it's got such a high bar to hit. Yeah. But yeah. I make jokes about it, but obviously I think it will eventually be okay. But, but yeah, mm. uh, what else? I mean, I'd be? say um, Dragon Age 4. Like, mm. there's a lot of excitement for that. However, Bioware has been on kind of a miss lately. I mean, regardless of... Yeah. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Before that, we had Anthem. Before that, we had Andromeda. Bioware isn't what they used to be, and that's kind of scary. I guess we'll see what will happen with you know Dragon Age Four and the next Mass Effect. But they're on pretty rocky ground right now, and mm. it could be a miss, even though people are super excited for a dr- new Dragon Age. Yeah, I think that's quite. A- smart choice really bioware are either going to redeem themselves now or they're going to sink and they can't really yeah. afford to sink further into the the doldrums of mediocrity yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. terry what do you think what do you think um anything jumping out here not got anything i was just thinking um elder scrolls and not in a way like because oh, i feel oh. like elder scrolls is in a weird place in that Skyrim is so beloved and is yeah. such a hard act to follow. And at the time when Skyrim came out, same kind of thing. Like they were almost like the studio, like, like Bethesda's like um, softworks were almost like the studio of like with RPGs, open world RPGs, those, those were the guys like, you know, they're going to create the pinnacle. And, and, and although they were always like very buggy and things like that, we just kind of let it slide because we knew what we were getting with it. But a lot since Skyrim's come out, a lot has changed, and a lot has. And I, I know we you mentioned about Cyberpunk, but pre Cyberpunk, like The Witcher kind of like was showing them, Witcher 3 was showing them actually this is how it should be done. Yeah. And you know, and people weren't crazy for Fallout 4, and then there was the whole Fallout 76 thing, and it was just like, oh, have they lost their way? And I just hope that they have kind of regrouped because they had a lot of bad stuff happen and, and they kind of come out and go you know we are especially now like um uh cd project red right have uh, yeah oh, they've yeah. dropped the ball so mm. now they can kind of come again and say okay look here's what we're about again. yeah you know? so yeah i hope i hope that we get something that's um as big or even bigger than skyrim and 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 something that's as impressive as Skyrim was, or even I believe in what was a Morrowind was before that, because yeah, I love those games. So yeah, I, I think at this point you're very close to what my my one is, which is Starfield. Is it Starfield? Is that the yeah the, yeah, the yeah. Space one? yeah? Like I've said it before on multiple shows, the engine that they're using and is a buggy mess anyway, and I know they've revamped it, but yeah. This is Bethesda we're talking about. Todd Phillips uh, has said a lot of things before, and it's not. Hey, always. it just works. Yeah, it just works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it. yeah. But <laughs> I just worry for seven. that game. Yeah, Grand Turismo Seven. For... I am. Um... Oh, sorry, go on. No, 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 go, go. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I thought I thought you'd finish it, but carry on. <laughs> I just think that we're. We're not hearing anything really about that game. And I know we're going to E3, so that's where we'll kind of Ooh. be able to tell. But I'm just worried for that game. Uh, I don't yeah. think 
since Skyrim, I don't think they've performed well on anything to the level that they used to. Mm. I think, and they are they did they do Dishonor two? Is that one of their subsidiary studios? No, that was um, Arcane, Arcane. Yeah, Arcane. Yeah. So what? Like obviously, Fallout four was not the best Fallout mm. by a long way. It was an okay game, but it was really buggy. Uh, and then 76. 76 was well that was yeah. the yeah. that, was, um, that was when cyberpunk said hold my beer like because that game was yeah. the the go to for absolute fuck up mm-hmm. like so the worry there they haven't hit a home run since skyrim guys was it like sure. almost 10 years ago since skyrim well skyrim wasn't it that's no crazy. it was 2011 2011, 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah. 10 years. Jesus. That, 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 that says it all, you know what I mean? Like, we, that's. Yeah. It's so that's a like time. a whole decade, a decade past. Of mediocrity. Yeah. But when in that, when yeah. that came out, they were the, they were the guys. They were the, like, yeah. the mm-hmm. leaders of that stuff. And, and, and same thing to like we were saying with like uh, Squaresoft back in the day. Now yeah. everyone else is caught up. Um, or, or pass them, and yeah, it's yeah, their yeah. turn. They have to take. They have to do what Square have done, and go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, like, and that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I hope that they've done. They go back I to the drawing so, yeah. board and and say, okay, like let's let's make. We can't just kind of rest on our laurels, and and mm-hmm. I, I never played Fallout Four, um, but yeah, I I love Fallout I Three, did. and yeah. a lot of people were saying like they didn't like it as much, and it was very underwhelming, and it didn't look really. You know the graphics looked pretty dated for you know, but yeah, it didn't age well. And yeah, even when it and that's came what out, I don't want. Right. I want that feeling yeah. of like we spoke to before when I when like, I had to buy a 360 because I saw Oblivion. I was like, oh my god, mm-hmm. like I can't believe that this is what I'm seeing. You know, like this is like next right. gen. That's what I want to see from from the new. It's, yeah, Xbox. totally. I remember playing Skyrim and just looking up and seeing the the sky and just being like, this is incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like and then yeah. you walk around in Fallout Four and you're like, "This is a this does not look good." No, like no. like and and I think it was because Fallout Four had a really long development, really and long. they were developing that before they finished Skyrim, obviously, and but mm-hmm. they didn't. Uh, there was a huge jump in technology and the games that were released in that period that were miles ahead because bear in mind in that period i believe gta 5 came out obviously which looked great even on the 360 playstation uh, 3 like and then that was when those sort of games were starting to come out which really pushed the graphics and the size and the scope and the open world so when fallout 4 came out it was just kind of like this doesn't look great Mm. yeah this doesn't this and it was playing like the fallout 3 <clears throat> just not as well it mm. hadn't been improved in mm. any way yeah so yeah. that's my worry that i hope hope they and i want to be wrong on this because i i want them to do really mm. well um because i love bethesda as a studio uh, i just i'm losing faith in them yeah 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 yeah, yeah. a lot of people are but maybe the only time will tell and speaking of time, it's that time, ladies You're and gentlemen. Wrong. It's not. It's not. I'm not ready. <laughs> it is. I'm it's that time. It's that time. Not ready for this. The podcast has come to a close, but that's not all of us for you this week, because, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Shifty Crab News Break hitting you on. Friday. That's right. We do a new show. If you didn't know, hosted by our one and only Terry Jeffs. And so far, it's been a pretty slow news week. But again, it's only Tuesday. So that so could E3 change. Hype, though. E3 hype yeah. is going to come in. Oh, yeah. yeah. That E3 hype is going to hit. And we're going to be so excited for everyone to literally announce when their practice conference is going to be this week. <laughs> because. We are less than a week away from E3. How insane is that? That's right. Wait, are we actually less than a week away? Or is no, it? We're, we're not. We're, are, over, we're over a week away. 
we're over a week. We're well, less than two enough. weeks away. Less than, yeah, less than, less than two, two weeks away. away. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa, calm down there, Vince. What's going maybe, on? Maybe Vince's E3, I know the time difference is a bit off, but maybe Vince's E3 <laughs> starts like a different date. It does start, it does start on the 12th, it right? Starts, that, this yeah. is what I'm saying. I'm confused. Because I know we've got 12th, the main, yeah. we've got the main things and the main shows, but like, because yeah. it's all digital, like, I know they probably bend the rules. That's why I thought maybe they have got some other little things starting next week and it so kind of starts far, from there. I Listen, think. we just got to stay to play. So it, we're, yeah. we're in the E3 zone the E3 right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could start any day now and we will just never know. We're not in the we're eye in the, of the storm the yet, but we can no. see. We're in the Thanksgiving of E3. We are. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. in the Thanksgiving of Christmas. E3. At any um, time, Nintendo could drop the Super Nintendo Switch yeah. Pro XL plus, you know. Until Whatever I see the giant it. Sonic float, I'm not interested. Mm. Wake me up, you know? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly what it is. That's true. That's anyway, true. Vince, what else do we have? What else do we have? We have just the podcast, really, which you are what currently watching. The podcast? <laughs> you wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> uh, you may be the best beard in the business. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk down on this podcast. It is a uh, deep uh, podcast. And it is so there's a special podcast. announcement for this podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, there it is a special announcement. It's the first the time. Podcast. That the yeah. Shifty Crab guys will be playing a game for you all to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we are will doing be playing that. a game and we are going to be drinking yep. and playing. And we, we are going to be playing Emily is Away 2. Yeah. Because that's what yeah. we do. We start on the second game. That's it. Like, yeah. Who needs to play the first? Come on. So we're going to be play playing Emily's Away 2 and do the podcast while we're playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, might be a little bit longer, uh, yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna cut it up and release it. Um, so we're gonna do the podcast while we play, um, and we're mm-hmm. gonna drink. And we're gonna drink. Sounds good. It's gonna be a good time. We're throwing some drinking we'll... games into there as well. So. Oh yeah, and that'll I'm be sure our last will. podcast before E3. So we'll during E3, our scheduling is gonna change, and we're gonna get that out to you. We'll let you know next week what that schedule is going to look like when we know it ourselves. Yeah, because right now, we don't know because developers clearly don't know either. So your guess is as good as ours. We could be doing Ubisoft on like a Thursday. Who knows? No, they actually yeah. set theirs for like Saturday or something, right? I forget. I, I, haven't, I don't even I want don't to look know. at it until the end of no. this week. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah. Terry's going to tell Whatever. us on Friday, on Thursday when these conferences are. Oh, I'm sure because everybody's they have to drop some news some at some point. We only have Ubisoft and Microsoft, and that's it. Please give us dates for the love of God. We are let we are over it's a week ridiculous. away from this. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. We usually know these like two months ago, but no, here we are with our hands in the air. Who knows? But anyway, aside from that, news break on Friday. Then you have the special. Emily is away. Two podcasts coming next week. Our last podcast before all the E3 madness hits. And definitely keep your eyes on the Shifty Crab YouTube channel, social media, and podcast services for all the spicy E3 news. So that's it, you guys. I have been your host, Vince, and I have been joined by the master debater himself, Adam Derry. Don't drink Jack Daniels honey and Lucas Aid. I need to shit. <laughs> oh, that's why you're not extending the podcast this time, huh? Yeah. You, you gotta leave. <laughs> yep. And as always with me is the retro king himself, Jedi Master Terry Jeffs. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. We didn't talk about food once. I uh, see. I wasn't gonna bring it up because I knew Adam was gonna run, run with it, but I mean, some, pick a mess. Yes. Like you cinnamon are. pick a mix, so uh, yeah. I, ha- I won't mention it on this podcast. It's gonna be a we'll mention on this podcast. Next, next podcast though, when we're drinking and playing Emily is away too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But for now, always been a pleasure. Never a, Never a chore. I couldn't work that. I couldn't work that in very well. You can't, se- you can't segue. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I want to, but I can't. <laughs> but tried, in the meantime, tried. everybody, I tried. I tried. Anyway. Stay shifty, everybody.